just one of the manifestations of energy. First thing you have to do is you have to understand energy. What is energy to you today? Maybe a pure field of possibility. How about that? If y'all remember my story, I love, I love telling my stories because they're experiences. But what an experience I had in the late 80s in that little motel room in where? Memphis, Tennessee. Misery in Memphis. That's a chapter in my book. Misery in Memphis. And again, I was at the bottom again. And I just didn't know what to do. But just listening to a little tape, a cassette that someone gave me, a gentleman, heavy accent, never heard of him. I was waiting for scripture, no scripture. So it wasn't registering with me, and I was just kind of out of boredom, just kind of uh, nodding off between. And all of a sudden, the man on the tape was saying, new physics has found that what we thought was empty space in the human cell is not empty, but it is a teeming electromagnetic field of possibility. And I came up out of that chair my brain stunned with what? I don't get it. But the cells of my body begin to radiate and vibrate with an inner knowing that I had found my potential. Possibly I had found God in me. Is my human potential. Wow. We use so little I know in this world of illusion and 3D materialism that we think that we're whole, but that's the illusion. We're not whole because how can you be whole and only use 10% of your mind? How can you be whole if you're using 3% of your genetic material and DNA? Oh, there's uncharted, there's uncharted parts of yourself that I want to guide you into. I want you to stick your toe in the pool of possibilities and realize you don't have to wait to go to heaven. Heaven is in you right now. Amen. You got to understand energy. You need to understand how to use energy. Energy is currency. I'm convinced that in every incarnation, whether you believe in one or a thousand does not matter to me, but any incarnation that you come into your creator gives you exactly the amount of energy that you need to reach your potential in that lifetime. Unfortunately, we've not been taught by most religions how to immerse us into that part of ourselves. Because religions and most systems of the third dimensional world is all about fix what you got, fix what you got, use what you got, recycle what you got. And it gets weary and unfulfilling, unfulfilling. How many would love to have the spirit of uh, uh, the experience of feeling uh, at one feeling totality, feeling wholeness? Or my Wednesday students, gnosis. Yeah, would you like to experience gnosis, divine knowledge, the mind of God itself. Mm -hmm. Hmm? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and because of that, we have not been venturous. We've stayed within the confinements of what's familiar. We have used the part of our evolutionary journey that helps us to adapt to what is instead of going forward into what isn't. There's the mystery, the mystery that's in each and every one of us. I realize that our greatest resource of wealth is what lies within us. I love a quote by Emerson that says, what lies behind us and what lies before us is, a, is tiny and matters very little to what lies within us. That's what I heard Randall saying today. So let's look at 
There's a very familiar story, some of you may know Russell Conwell's uh, book on Acres of Diamonds. Yes. Do you remember that? Yeah. It's about an Asian farmer who had a very rocky farmland, didn't look like much anything, and he decided there wasn't any future in it whatsoever. But it turned out underneath that was the Galconia Diamond Mine, one of the richest ever discovered. Sometimes we look a little rough on the outside. We feel limited on the outside. But I want you to discover the treasure that is within you. Do not judge yourself by the limit of your education, for instance. Do not judge yourself because of what talent you have or don't have. I hear people say, well, I just don't have a talent. I can't do this. I can't play music. I can't do this. I'm... Underneath you is a diamond mine of possibilities that is waiting for us. We judge ourselves as being unworthy. Whether we know it or not, at some level, that has been put in us, in our first chakra. Mm -hmm. In that time of coming in to five or six years old, we were not told many times how worthy that we are. And if we've been taught we were been worthy, it's been the ego's version. Oh, you're so special. There's nobody like you. I think that's done more harm than it has done good for a lot of young people who start thinking that they are special in the sense of the part of them that is separate. Hmm? The specialness is what we share. It's not what divides us. When you make an energetic investment, you have asked yourself, what is going to be the payoff? That's right. So what I'm hearing today is mindfulness. Being conscious. Just being with Randall this weekend, which he spends sometimes with us, we're a little, a little selfish to have him come because we know we're going to get some counseling out of him. He counsels us. He, he brings us back into a place of observing ourselves and where we are. And it changes things. It gives me a different perspective. It makes me realize that I need to work on being more proactive than being reactive. Yes. And I can believe that. You see, I was taught, here, here's a good example, and this is a good thing, that God is my source, that uh, I don't have to save, I don't have to do anything, God will always supply, uh, all I have to do is just not worry about anything to do with, say, money. But that's not true. Maybe God has a plan about your money and life in general. A way in which if we don't understand the plan of our life, how can we invest in the plan of our life if we don't know it? We certainly invest in other people's <laughs> way too much until we become energetically bankrupt because we've given so much of our power away. Whether it's through the wrong, not wrong, but the misaligned marriage or the misaligned relationship or being in the wrong situation uh, that is not feeding us, only taking from us. Then all of a sudden something happens and we need a healing, we need a miracle, we need a, a right job, we need to know about where we need to move and we need to draw on that part of our energy that is beyond our survival level. Amen. Yeah. Hmm? So where I'm going to go with this, again, is with my experience. <clears throat> I've told you that some energetics and how that was birthed in me was seeded many decades before that I had the experience that became the downloads for teaching vibration sound therapy and tuning forks started very young. 
probably 10 or 11 years ago, living in Tulsa, Oklahoma, which was the religious capital of the world at the time. It was known for oil and oral. <laughs> oral <all> Roberts. <laughs> So my parents drug me around all these big tent revivals, healing evangelists all came to Tulsa, thousands of people. You know, they didn't have phones and computers, barely had a TV that worked. So people would go to these revival meetings every night. Being the unusual person that I always have been, with a different rapport with time and space, I began to observe why didn't some people get healed. I watched lines of people to be prayed for and watched miracles happen to some of them, but not all of them. And here they were asking the same God. And I, I learned that this God that I had learned about was no respecter of persons, that he wasn't going to make any difference between anyone before we're all his children. And I said, uh-uh. <laughs> This isn't working. So I always tried to find out the question, what is the answer to why people don't heal? Then let's move forward a few decades when I got into more metaphysical teachings. It wasn't about just physical healings and miracle meetings, but it was about manifesting. Prosperity workshops were big in the new thought metaphysical community and still remains to be. Finding your partner, the right one, what they call their soulmate, that I call twin flame. See, if we didn't know more how to do this, Amen. huh? We might have a different record <laughs> about relationships and marriages and things like that. But we didn't know that finding a relationship is spending the currency of energy in the form of frequency and matching. Yeah, we didn't, we didn't, nobody taught us that. I didn't, if you, if you had raised in a church like that, good for you. But I wasn't taught. Check in on the vibration and see how it matches. <laughs> the closest thing they came to it is deep calleth unto deep in the Bible. Deep calleth unto deep or like attracts like. So, in many ways, we kind of spent recklessly in investing in our relationships and things like that. Now, I know in the bigger picture, we will say everything works together, and we can take these things that we have done to ourselves and, and use the law of alchemy and change the lead into gold. So don't feel bad and judge yourself because I had a bad marriage. I was in marriage that I was abused or somebody deserted me or whatever. I wouldn't live with that. It's not worth it. Just bring it on up to experience and growth and opportunity. Huh? That's what alchemy is. Not something to make you feel bad about yourself, but something I learned, something that expanded my experience. And now I can be more for somebody else. But I'm not sure you had to go that way. There was a better way. That was a more excellent way to found those in your life to attract that were there because it was destined for your growth together. How much have we spent falling in love? <laughs> People say to me, oh, I fell in love the minute. And I said, well, bless your heart. <laughs> you should not fall for anything. Coming together in the right frequency is about rising and growing together, not falling into the pits of ego and separation. So again, I wondered, I saw then, you know, the whole thing of the secret came out and, and the law of attraction, and some were really manifesting, but not all. And what I found out was human beings have reached a level over the board of learning how to be survival 
of the species, if I can use that term. We think surviving is having a roof over our head, a car to drive, food to eat. We have to have that to survive. Now some of us want to put the ice cream on the pie <laughs> and drive the uh, nicer car and to go a little higher in the luxury side of things like that. So we're not just doing something because we need, um, God felt like going into repentance after what he said today because <laughs> <laughs> with my car fetish, <laughs> I don't know why I keep thinking, there's the one, there's the one, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Yeah, I repent. <laughs> but instead of thinking, I need something reliable to get me from A to B, but not be good for me. I need something <laughs> that I really think I really want and need that's going to make me feel satisfied. <laughs> now, I've had some great cars, but none of them have been totally satisfying. Because <laughs> there's always a nicer and new one coming out. <laughs> This is the human side of us, not to condemn ourselves or to be judgmental. It's just a human idiosyncrasy that we all deal with more than others at times like that. But what, what happened that brought the solution after decades of searching for this answer was really the help of quantum principles. Quantum principles answered so much that religion could not answer for me. Just could not do it. But as I begin to understand such things, and let me give you one of the simple statements that shifted everything that came from the fathers of quantum physics, Max Planck, Einstein, David Bohm, are those guys in the Bible? I don't think so. <laughs> Thought it said Ezekiel, Jeremiah, Joseph. You know, oh yeah, and I heard of those guys. But what about the people in the last 100, 150 years that has contributed to opening up a world we didn't even know existed? Mm -hmm. The quantum world, yeah. the deeper world within us. But the statement was this, everything is energy. Say it with me. Everything, everything is energy. Does not say everything has energy. There's the difference. That word is made the difference to me. Everything is energy. Then it goes on and says about the world of the material, about the material world, we have all been wrong, for the material world does not exist. It is only energy vibrating at a slow enough frequency that the five senses can perceive it as real. I thought, oh my God, you've answered 5,000 years of Eastern teachings of illusion, <laughs> Maya. You see, a lot of people just want to believe that, but the quantum gave us the answer to it. Many times the teacher, Yeshua, had to stop in his teaching process and say, you that have ears, hear. Only you that have eyes will see. And he wasn't talking about the five senses. He was talking about inner insight. He was talking about quantum. <clears throat> Yeshua was truly a quantum man who walked this earth 2,000 years ago and said, I'd love to take you deeper, but you're not ready yet. So I will just wrap all of this in a bunch of stories and parables. But there shall be a time you shall be shown plainly of the Father. Wow, that's us. That's us. This is our time that everything that had to be covered in symbolism and parables, and stories, and myth is being open to us in its clarity. 
And that's what heart light's about. That's why people don't always stay and come because they're still always looking for the symbolism to fit the symbolism they've been given. But we're trying to go behind the symbol. And that's truly the definition of metaphysics. Beyond that level. I learned through quantum physics that energy is infinite. Kind of like God. <laughs> Maybe it is God. Maybe God is just energy with no beginning and no end. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No birth and no death. <laughs> Undefinable, non-local. <laughs> and you are it having an experience with itself. Amen. How you like that? Yeah. Woo! Here we go. How you like that when we say I am? I am its experiencing itself. And the minute it experiences itself and says I am, you were. You. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> So we learned that there's no empty space, not only in the cell, but there's no empty space anywhere. So the best illustration I can get you is a little fish that's swimming around in the water, in the ocean, but doesn't know. It doesn't know it's in the ocean because it can't, all it can see is the thing that's in the ocean. It sees coral reefs, it sees other fish, it sees rocks, it sees things, just objects. And he thinks that's all there is because he can see it. And that's what you and I think. We think we see a chair, we see a piano, we see a car, we see a house, and we think that's all there is. And the rest is just empty space. And this little fish says, I've heard there's water. <laughs> I went to a group, a school of fish, <laughs> that were teaching there's water and it's everywhere and I want to find it. <laughs> And this little fish was working hard. And let's bring in another little fish from the school, the teacher, and said to the little fish, you need enlightenment. You need to remember you're in the water. Water is endless and infinite. And that's the way we are as human beings. We don't realize that we have access to universal, yes. infinite source. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Infinite source. And where religion has failed us and where schools of thought has failed us, it's never taught us that and never taught us how to use it. And therefore, we keep using only enough to survive. Yes. Tell them. Maybe it's time to shift from survive to thrive. Is that what the teacher meant when he said, I come to you to bring life and more abundantly. So if you think you're just using a certain amount of your energy to manifest your money, uh, and you're not using and have access to the source of energy for money, then you're limited with your money. What you can draw in will be limited hmm? because you've been conditioned. Well, I don't have the degree, so therefore people don't have a degree, just make this much a year. So I'm doing pretty good if I can do that. Or, you know, all these conditionings that we've been conditioned with, with culture and society, gives us limitations about ourselves. And then we believe it's the trouble. It's not the limitations, it's the belief in the limitation becomes the block. Yep. So you gotta change your belief system. You gotta change your thinking system completely. So when I started putting this thing together and moved into doing energy work, I thought, how can I connect people to the infinite resource of energy beyond their survival level. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Now, here's what I use, and I've used this a thousand times. If you've ever been to me for a tuning, I'm going to sit you down and I'm going to do a little drawing for you, but I'm going to uh, try to show you something about what it means. You've been taught faith, a lot of you, to have faith. Sometimes we use faith correctly and sometimes we don't use faith so correctly. But let's say that you really have a desire. You come here to Heartlight and you have a desire, oh my God, I don't want to see another month they're struggling to get the budget. So I'm going to have faith and I'm going to write them a $10,000 check. And I know my heart's right and God's going to back that up. So you write the $10,000 check by faith and you give it to us. We deposit it. It goes into your account. Insufficient fund. You didn't have anything in the bank to back up what you had written. So insufficient fund means I can't manifest. But let's say you win the lottery, which is really big right now. <laughs> Way over a billion dollars. Oh, really? Yeah, that solves some issues, wouldn't it? Or, yeah. or cause some problems, too. Yeah. <laughs> Money sometimes can cause more problems than solve them. Yeah. Or let's say you get an inheritance or something comes along and you go down to the bank and you deposit several thousands of dollars. Now you write a check to Harlight for 10000 and it goes through. So until you have that access and connection to the infinite source of all energy, your writing the check would be your prayers for manifestation. That's right. yeah. That prayer for healing for that situation in your body or your mind. If you're struggling and hardly making ends meet and you need more finance to live a better life, do you have the resource beyond the survival level? Now, a lot of us have ended up, apparently, at a place where we are surviving. Is there anybody here that's homeless? Everybody does have a roof over their head. Anybody here that's totally hungry and doesn't know where you're going to get food today? Good, you're surviving. So we've all learned a certain confinement that we've adapted to I'm going to have enough for this, I'm going to have enough for that, I'm going to have just enough for this, I got just a little bit enough for that. But when it comes to something beyond that, and I need to go to my resource, and it's not in there, I can pray till I'm blue in the face. I can beg, I can fast, I can stand on my head, do yoga, and gargle peanut butter. <laughs> Isn't that silly? I heard Carolyn May say that one time, and I thought that was the silliest thing I ever heard. So, but it, the point is, you can do anything that you want to. But the universe or God, whatever you want to call it, can't give you any more than you give it. So when somebody comes in for a tuning, and, and our, our first level that we do is called the energy vitality technique. And that is where we begin, is how do I take your personal energy field and connect it to universal energy field? It's like marching you down to the World Bank. <laughs> Making a withdrawal, and then bringing it back, giving it to the chakras who are intelligent and how to <clears throat> invest that energy into your third <clears throat> energy anatomy, sorry, <clears throat> energy anatomy. <clears throat> the honey. Yeah, the honey. Dip your finger in the honey. Are you with me? Hold on. <clears throat> <clears throat> so, you get what I'm saying to you in that? Yeah. So we teach people how, and I, I was, you that have been through the classes know that we start at the coccyx. Why at the coccyx? Because that's where you have energy you're not using mm. called Kundalini. Yeah. Mm. Because the energy you don't use that you even have, you're not even using all the energy you have available to you on the human level. All comes down the spine, gravity pulls it down until it ends up around the coccyx. 
area. <clears throat> so that's where you have to go to connect. So I'm not trying to give you a so energetics lesson here, but I'm trying to tell you this is the thing that show me that people are not going to heal, people are not going to manifest until they have access to the energy beyond survival level to do it. Now, however you want to do that, that's fine. It doesn't have to be one way. It doesn't have to be through our tuning forks or whatever. But there are ways that you need to ask your higher self, how can I connect to energy beyond survival? I am not here to live the limited life. I'm here to live the unlimited life. I truly, we used to say in the church, kid of the king. <laughs> That was the terminology. Or a son or daughter of God. And therefore I have a birthright. Mm -hmm. I have an inheritance. Mm -hmm. That is fully mine. Holy Spirit teach me the wisdom. In how to spend it and invest it. In ways that brings interest. Oh, mm -hmm. What interests you? Mm -hmm. Where's your passion drawing you to? See, some people are interested in coming and learning to me first. Pe some people aren't. People are more interested to go and learn reconnection or to learn uh, uh, something else. There's so many things out there. There's so many different modalities out there that people uh, are attracted toward. I don't care which one it is. Just get in something that helps you connect to something bigger than yourself. And then ask for the wisdom how to invest it into yourself. You know, I've heard that people who win the lottery end up in horrible shape that don't seek financial advice. They're not used to having that much money, and they blow it on this and blow it on that. I've heard of people committing suicide, having nervous breakdowns because of all this money being thrown upon them, and they did not know what to do with it, and they didn't use it wisely. So make sure you're following your interest and you'll get interest and beyond that. <clears throat> I'm going to quit here now, but I wanted to share something I wanted to share last week, if I can find it real quick. <clears throat> it's kind of interesting. Tim, you help me with... Uh, the one about the 60,000, yeah. <clears throat> Did you know worldwide, if you are making 60000 annually or 5000 a month, that you're in the top 1% of the richest people in the world? Now, that does not, it's not, that's not American percentages. <laughs> in American percentages, you're going to be making a whole lot more to be in the 1%. But globally, on the global level, anyone making that amount of money actually is considered in the top 1%. Minimum wage at McDonald's is around 30000 and annually that puts you in the top 5% wow. of the world. I just thought these statistics were mind uh, changing to think about how relative things are as to who's the wealthy. So don't compare yourself to the CEO of Amazon <laughs> or Musk or any of these other overpaid billionaires and say, I, I'm poor compared to them. You are not. You need to feel rich. You need to feel rich. You need to feel that way. And feeling becomes thought. And thought becomes an emotion. And emotion is an attraction that brings to you the manifestation. Now the reason, and I'm not planning to harp on this every Sunday about uh, money and prosperity and all that. I, I took this time because I want us to be a prosperous community. Not for the reasons of just being wealthy and having money. I've often said people need to have money to do away with the need for money. <laughs> people who have money don't sit around and think about, do I have enough? Meet yourself where you are in enough. 
and just realize there is so much more. But if you're, if you're prosperous, heart, I can't say heart like can be prosperous. You're heart like. You that come here, you that have plugged in to this as your spiritual space to be fed and to be a part of, you're heart like. So you, it's your prosperity that becomes the prosperity of heart like. There's things we want to do, we want to keep things up around here. I appreciate what Tim and Michael and, and, and Randall did because we didn't have to pay them money because they gave uh, an exchange differently. That was an energetic currency exchange that they made for Heartlight. But we may need to hire people once in a while to come and do things that we don't have people to volunteer to do. So don't you dare, any of us, think that the goal is the budget of $9,000 a month and go, oh, we made it, ha. Ah. <laughs> Don't misunderstand me, I'm glad we made it, but I'm looking beyond. Ice cream. <laughs> I'm looking for the ice cream, and I, I actually like cheese on my apple pie, but, but I'll take the ice cream. But we have a vision of heart light. Whatever it happens, and all the way the heavens open up and this place fills up with people. There, there's people in Charlotte don't even know we're here. Huh? What? A, a, an area of what? A couple of million people or whatever? You don't think we can get a hundred or two hundred out of two million that's out there? Then we can't hold it. What we need to do, we got wonderful land out here to build something if we need to do it. But it's going to take money and prosperity to do that. And that starts now, not then. It starts now. So I want to thank you for allowing us to, I hope, just remind you who you are and what you deserve and worthy to receive. Let us take a moment. Holy Spirit, you are our true teacher, living in each and every one of us, not just me. I am not the teacher, but I address the teacher in all of us. Help us to realize that you are the you in guru. <laughs> you are the you in the guru. It is in you. We've opened up in consciousness a subject, a subject that is often ignored, swept under the rug, found to be uncomfortable. We've dared to open it up for this time, this last couple of weeks, this Sundays. And now we ask for all that we have heard and been taught to be made into practical application. First of all, heal anything here that would cause us to feel unworthy to receive. Take a deep breath and let it go. And say to yourself, I am worthy to receive. In fact, say it out loud. I am worthy to receive. It is your true father's desire to give you the things of the kingdom of heaven. If your natural father knows how to give you good things, how much does your heavenly father give to you? God's not withholding a thing from you. You're just blocked from receiving it. Bring them down in this moment. This is the moment we call the moment of ministry. Let the Spirit minister to your soul, to your mind. Remove the old cobwebs of old doctrines that said you were born in sin and you're not worthy and you're not good enough. Let it go. I am a child of this universe. Be healed of the belief in lack. So we have an apple pie, we'll use it again. We'll cut it into six pieces 
And I take a piece and then somebody says, oh, he took a piece of the pie, it's less for me. But let me give you the recipe. And you can build all the apple, uh, bake all the apple pies you want if you've got the recipe. You're not limited to just one, but you got the recipe. And you want an apple pie, you just make that apple pie. <laughs> Holy Spirit is giving us a recipe today on how that I can be without the limitations of the third dimensional human being. And I can be the result of the abundance of all that I've been created to be in the human story that I'm a part of. Financially, mentally, emotionally, and in every level that makes us who we are. Just take a deep breath, breathe into it, relax into it, and make yourself available to the universe to flow through you and as you in any form that is following your intent for the highest and best good. Three little words say yes to the highest and best. <clears throat> I said yeah, yes, yes, yes. I said yes, yes, yes. Help me. I said yes, Lord. I I said yes, yes, yes. I said yes, yes, yes. I said yes, yes, yes. I said yes, Lord. I Convince me. 